à Montréal. Greetings from Montreal, site of the 43rd Annual International Conference of the Society for College and University Planning. Now, honestly, when I signed on, I was under the impression this was a conference for sexy college and university planning. I mean, that's why I registered. Who said classrooms can't be sexy? And you should see who SCUP is. Architects, space planners, idea developers, concept people, and folks like me who work in the academic setting. And like Philip Stack, whom I met from the University of Alberta here in Canada. He set me straight on just what SCUP is all about. I'm sitting with Philip Stack from the University of Alberta where he is the Associate Vice President of Risk Management Services. He's also the co-chair of this year's SCUP conference here in Montreal and next year he'll be in charge of Portland SCUP conference. SCUP is uh, North America's leading uh, professional organization for universities to assist them in the areas of uh, integrated planning. So when we talk about integrated planning, we're talking about the direct link of an institution's academic plan with their financial resources and their capital plans. And how do you bring those together in a way that you can advance the vision and mission of the institution? In your academic planning process, you should look at things like uh, how do you want to deliver the programs to your students? What are leading edge ways in which we can engage the students, particularly in your case where you have a unique uh, group of students that have specific requirements regarding their, their education and, and how they're uh, taught uh, in their environment. Now here's a presentation worth looking at. Dix and Hannah, the Associate Provost for Planning at Virginia Tech. I want to talk to this man. What would you say, for example, to the new studio classroom faculty practitioner? Well, I'd probably tell a new faculty would be, find the mentor and go work with them. Well, again, we, because of what we've done, we've got active faculty of virtually every department now who are engaged and who are working with the new tech. I would probably match them up to say, go work with Professor so-and-so because he's already doing what you want to do. And the Dean of Instruction? I would encourage her to go look for some key faculty to be early adopters who she can nurture and work with and begin to develop how the, what does the pedagogical style mean for a particular discipline, for a particular course, and run a series of pilots and eventually work your way through the whole curriculum. But you're going to have to lead by example and you're going to have to demonstrate to the other faculty what a successful class, the studio class, looks like. What's, because it's a different rhythm. It's a different way of measuring performance. It's a different series of activities. Um, it's a whole different way of teaching. I'm sitting with Celia Kent from Harvard University, where she is the Director of Planning for the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Celia, what should we bear in mind as a project team working on infrastructure redesign? One of the things when we bring teams together, um, understanding the decision-making hierarchy and process and establishing sort of ground rules for communication right at the start is crucial. Um, and so, if you're, especially if you're working with outside vendors, they need to know who is making decisions and they need to, you know, they need to understand people's roles. And so talking through the roles that people have is, it's sort of, com that's common sense, but it's also, doesn't always happen. Um, and it's better if there's one person through whom most information funnels. And it's probably very good to have a rigorous meeting schedule because you schedule the meetings, like whether they need to be weekly or biweekly or whatever they are. And you can cancel them if you have nothing to say, but usually getting together, you discover what you don't know to put on agenda. I'm delighted to be here with Mark Valenti, the president and CEO of the Sextant Group in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Mark. Tell me, what kind of firm is the Sextant Group? The Sexton Group is nominally a technology consultancy that specializes in audiovisual and information technologies and acoustics. But we, uh, we have a particular interest in designing learning space. Is there anything special about science-related classrooms? In my last decade of work, the most significant trend has been the merging of the, what we used to call the pre-lab classroom and the laboratory. Uh, and so we find, we find presentation tools and collaboration tools have moved into the hands-on lab and the pre-lab, the lecture component of that has just kind of gone away as a space, as a space type. 
and those are merged to make better, better use of the lab space. Um, and so we find new kinds of floor plans where there might be a, a gathering in the middle with lab benches around the perimeter. Architect Grace Chang is with Holt Architects in Ithaca, New York. In her presentation, she talked about the importance of flexibility in teaching and learning spaces. What is the importance of flexibility, Grace? Well, we think flexibility is probably one of those key qualities that today's classroom, anyways, needs to have. Um, because people were really out there teaching using a lot of different tools, and what that means is that the room needs to be set up in a lot of different ways so, to accommodate different professors or even the same professors' different content. And it's not necessary, I don't think, for every room to do everything.